big star. No. Um, a big star. Uh, it's a ninja star. It's not stars in space star. It's stars in ninja star. This is a Karakuri Hengen from Shuriken Sentai Nin Ninja. This is the uh, last Nin Ninja item video singy babob. So after this, we're going to be moving into Kyoruja territory, which is technically taking a backward step, but it's also still technically also. Well, it's going in order of um, what um, I ordered, basically. So going in order of what I ordered. A bit strange, but all right. Karakuri Hengen box. It's quite a big box. As you can see, I've got a picture of Aka Ninja, like on most boxes. We also have a photo of the actual item itself. This is it in sword mode, as you can tell by the blade sounds. On the top of the box, you can tell that there's a photo of the Ninja Shuriken, as that is, of course, included Shuriken plus all five nin ninjas. On the bottom of the box, we of course have a photo of again all five nin nin ninjas, as you can see. On this side of the box, we have Aka Ninja again with the Karakuri Hengen on the bottom. And on the other side, we have another photo of Aka Ninja plus the Karakuri hanging again. And on the back of the box, we have product shots. Right, so for a start, we have a photo of the uh, the ha the uh, Key Ninja Shuriken blade and core. The other things you can use the Key Ninja Shuriken with, so the Ninja Ichiban, the Gamma Gamma Gun, both of which I've reviewed in the past. You can also use it as a head for Shuriken Jin, the Ninja the Nin Ninja's Megazord. And we have all three modes this thing can do. We have the sword mode here with the star attached for the finisher, bow mode with the star finisher too, and then the claw mode for the, also for, the, for another star finisher. So all of these modes have their own unique finishers. So that makes three finishers, which I think is the most amount of finishers a this could have, uh, an item from the ninja could have, because I think the second highest was the um, star or sword gun, because I had two finishers, I think. Um, although I'm not entirely sure. Right, let's get this thing open. On which side is this side? Uh, I keep doing these reviews. Um, which side is it? Um, okay, I am going to have to move this out of the way first, quickly. Are there any leaflets inside? No, I already took them out. There was a little code leaflet inside for a special ninja campaign. Uh, where is it? In here. This is it, I think. Yeah. There was this leaflet included, which is like a small like a ninja campaign. I think this light may be running out of juice. I know, let's try the other light that I've conveniently got on the side. Let's see if this one works, because I swear to god it I hope it does. Yeah. Oh, I had a mix up with the lights there, sorry about that. Anyway, it came with this little leaflet here telling you to go to a this website here, which is still a thing. Then to this code for an online game, and if you win, you'll get a mystery shuriken. It was the um all five ninjas shuriken, if I believe. It was a shuriken that had a photo of Aki Ninja, Al Ninja, Ki Ninja, Shuri Ninja, and Mommy Ninja. Anyway, this is the Karakuri Hengen in its box as it came in the shops. Now again, I got the Karakuri, I got this Karakuri Hengen from Amazon Japan. And it came with a box. Now if you remember, I said I got the Ninja Ichiban tour. The funny ninja sword. This thing from um, Amazon Japan too, but this didn't but that didn't come with a box. So this came from Amazon Japan, and yet this came with a box. So you get, you basically get two things. You get the Key Ninja Shuriken and you get the Karakuri Hengen. Now this is the only instance I, I know of where the Shuriken actually comes with the blade attached. So let's just take that out. 
Let's have a look at the shuriken first. Now again, I took the batteries out because these things don't have any off switches. Um, let's just take a look at the this shuriken. It's split into two parts. We have the blade here. That's just rubbery plastic, soft plastic. And the core, as you can see, of the kanji for yellow, which is where the light is positioned as well. We have the Ninja logo clips for the Megazord. We have a button on the back with sad Pac-Man as well. You can push the button down. We have a black button, which is a release button for the blade. Underneath is a little activation button for when the blade is attached. That's different sounds. This bottom button here, when you push it over and over again, it will do whatever transformation noise or attack noise this has got programmed. Of course, you can lift the nicely painted Keninja visor up here. And underneath you have the sticker underneath showing the Keninja visor. Anyway, to attach the blade to the shuriken, you have to take the blade here. And there's two tabs inside. And you've got to line those tabs up with these holes like this and push it in and when it's in you turn it and this is what forms the shuriken as you can see you, you could of course use this as a head for shuriken engine if you want if you like and the other item we have is the actual karaku hangen itself so let's move its package gump out of the way and we can show you this now, this is the Karakuri Hengen. It's quite a big item um, if you're used to Power Rangers merchandise at least. Let's set it up the. Well, I, well, I suppose it's the right way. Um, just going to look at how the American version. Because I've got the American version right here. Hello. Now, hello. I'm going to do a comparison later. Um, from that quick glance, you've got, you could probably tell how big this version is compared to. Just size difference. If you're used to American merchandise, this item, the Karakuri Hengen, will be a bit of a uh, a shock for you because I've got quite big hands. This thing, I can hold this just fine, as you can see. But of course, the uh, Japanese, the American version, oh, your knuckles get 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 a bit stuck here. So the American, so the Japanese version fits fine. Not the American version. What am I talking about? Uh, right, so let's just position this just here. Excuse me. Right, we, this thing has got three modes. This is currently in a, like a star position. This doesn't count as one of the modes. We will get to the individual modes this thing has. Before that, I will say there's some nice metallic stickers on it. I'm just going to position that so you can see them like shine just a bit better. Nice metallic stickers going on there. The the um, the decoration is not done too badly. The the back the speaker. Uh, the actual battery compartment is actually in the handle right here. Release buttons. We'll get to them in a minute. This is a release button. On the top for the for the stall, we'll get to that later. Yeah, on our switch, there's a activation button here and there's an activation button here. So it's for if you are left or right-handed. As you can see, this way it'll still work. This way it'll still work because where your thumb's positioned. Anywho, the actual inside barrel thing you can see here, we have some release uh, triggers buttons. We'll get to how this works later. Okay, so to get to solid, I'm just, just going to do this without any sounds on first. But you will get to the sounds later because I don't want the sounds to be talking over my explanations of all this stuff. The first thing we need to uh, acknowledge is that the handle on the back here can actually be moved around if you push these two triggers in here. Doing that will allow you to move the handle. Now you can only move it to two positions. So this is the first one. This is the second one. It does not spin all the way around. It just moves these two positions. There is a little arrow pattern 
right right here that shows you which way you can turn it here it is again so that's nice to get to uh, sword mode the first mode this offers what you have to do first is you have to you've got a little blade here where the blue sticker is you have to move this up here and then what you need to do then is you need to take the handle and spin it around to this position and this is now in sword mode it's a small blade yeah um, I know that this is not the direct focus point of this item the idea is it's a multi-purpose weapon it's a small blade I don't mind small blades this does look really honestly this looks comically small it looks almost funny it looks like a thing from like a parody Sentai or something, but I don't mind at all. I don't mind. One thing I will point out is that they've actually done a quite a nice job with the the blade work. Because, yeah, these are rubber, but they've done it with like nice metallic finish. Which you probably can't tell on camera, but it's all metallic. It looks nice. So this just gets plopped into there. And to get to claw mode, which is the next mode, we are going to take the handle... Spin it around again, and then there's some more blades. We need, we need to pop up. There's a blade here where the fire sticker is. And there's a blade where the red sticker is here. And now it's in claw mode. Apparently, this little thing at the front counts as a claw, but I don't know. I'm a, I'm a bit skeptical about that. Claw mode, everyone. Right. And the last mode this does, which is bow mode, all you need to do is that if, if if you've got these blades out in claw mode, you just need to move these up about here. And this is now in bow mode. Bow mode. Yes, I know I'm holding it wrong, but I can't really fit it in camera when I'm when I'm doing this kind. This is in this is now in bow mode. Very nice um bow mode. And the actual arrow that you shoot out, this yellow part here with the yellow sticker comes out and back in again so this is the arrow missile that, that you shoot out so they've managed to simulate this of course in the show and all on the uh, promotional photographs for featuring the live action footage of the ninja like if you see a photo of Akin ninja using it of course this will put out a lot further but since that this is the bit that you, that you put is literally like hollow because it has to fit around this little stalk plastic here. There's no way they could make it pull that out that far in real life. So um, that's just a prop, but whatever, it's just, they, they did the best they could. Right, so now we are going to turn the sounds on. Actually, no, before we do that, we're just going to show off really quickly how the star works. Star just gets plopped into the centre. And that is what causes the finishing attacks to work. And of course, to release it, just push on this yellow trigger and pull it out. Of course, I'm explaining all this now, just so the sounds don't talk over in the future. But now we're going to actually turn this on and get to the sounds. Sounds. The on off switch is right here. Standard activation noise. Now this is currently in sword mode, but when you move the handle, when you spin the handle and you push the triggers and move the handle, you do get this noise. Like, look, this locking noise. And I believe this is currently in sword mode? Yes, it's currently in sword mode, yeah. Sorry about that. And this is currently in sword mode, so again, you lift the blade up. And this is in sword mode, so the handle is off to the... It's um, horizontal now, the handle's horizontal when facing the blade. Pushing either trigger will get you a slashing noise. So that's good. And now for each mode, we, we, we are going to do a finisher noise. The finishing noise of the sword mode is this. So you set a shuriken, and you will hear 
A little noise followed by a standby noise, and then when you push the trigger, it will get the finishing attack. Zan. Zan! Zun! Zun! What does that remind me of? That, that reminds me of something. That... Oh yeah, that was, um... Zandor Sunder, wasn't it? Oh, I, 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 yeah, I get it now. Okay. And again, just pushing the trigger again. We'll, we'll give you the same noise you just heard. And of course, re re releasing the shuriken will give you your standard release noise. Like that. And now we're going to go to claw mode. And to get to claw mode, we just need to spin the handle again. So now it's in vertical position. And then we need to lift up these little claws right here. And now it's in claw mode. And to, yeah, the, again, you'll get some no more noises. So you'll get like a slashing noise again. So I think you get two slashing noises, actually. There we go. And now when you do a shuriken finisher, you'll get, you'll, you'll hear this. Very nice. Excuse me, I don't know if you just heard that. Um, excuse me. Uh, very, very nice. And again, we're just going to have to remove the star from the holder. Like that. And now we're going to go to bow mode. Now, the thing about bow mode is that because this handle only goes into two locations. It goes like this and like that. When it's in claw mode, when you get those noises and you get the this finisher, Karakuri. Now that that was a bad example because it always says that. Uh, anyway, when it's in claw mode, all you need to do, right, is you need to move up these little arrows here. And you've got bow mode. Now the thing is, when you're in bow mode, pushing the the, the the button on the trigger will just give you the claw slashing sounds again. To get to the bow slashing, to, to get to the bow noise, you've just got to pull this up. And then release. And now, because it's technically still in claw mode, the only thing in, different about claw mode, let's, 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 let's see. You can put the, these back to claw mode, and you can still do the bow noise. So these little things here do nothing. So when you're in bow mode, you're also technically in claw mode, depending on what buttons or stuff you press. The finisher for bow mode actually technically is also the finisher for claw mode, because it when the shuriken is being put on the actual thing, it will go two ways. So when you set the shuriken, you'll hear the standby noise. If you push the trigger on the back, you'll get the claw finisher. If you pull this part out, you'll get the bow finisher. As I'll now demonstrate. So, basically, if you set a shuriken when the handle is in claw position, you can get the claw finisher and the bow finisher. So these blades really do not do anything. So, and again, it's not like the star does anything, because again, like with the with most ninja toys, you can see it in the barrel here, there's a little re rectangular button here and if you push that it will act as if you've just put a star in and of course I'm just going to say like you can of course do it like this
Very nice. Right, so. Oh, wait, move the um, little things. Right, so that is basically everything that I can show you about this item. And the, and the last thing that I need to do in this video is do the American comparisons. Right, so first off, we're going to compare the stars. We have the Ninja Shuriken here. And we have the Yellow Ninja Power Star here. And you can tell that the size difference is... God blimey, mate. Uh, mm. As you can see, there are no clips on the front for the Megazords. Of course, the, there are no lights and sounds. This little visor thing doesn't lift up on the American version because it's not comparable with Megazord. The clips are replaced with these little circular like finger holes, hand holes almost. Of course, you cannot remove the little blades from the American version. Back's a lot smaller as well, there's no sounds, lights, there's no button. Either replaces it with these rail system because again, because the stars have no lights and sounds, they make them more for do all the work. With the sounds, and now we're going to do a uh, Karakuri Hengen comparison compared to the Ninja Battle Morpher. So let's get out the Karakuri Hengen. Let's get out this thing here. And as you can see, the color scheme overall appearance, it's not that far off, I don't think. Um, of course, one of these things I will say is that these stickers here, they are not metallic. They are not. They don't shine at all, as you can see. These ones do shine, these ones do not shine. So they did save a bit of cash on the non-metallic stickers. Um, the graphic for the fire is different, as you can see, because this one looks a lot more detailed. This one just looks a bit more cartoony. Um, the actual shuriken slot in the middle is the most different because this one has just one button for shuriken um, when you place a shuriken. This one has got pins because the idea is you set a star and then spin the star and then these rails on the back of the star here will push down these pins in certain orders and the morpher will read the gap, the time gap in between the pins pushed and well basically it reads the space in between with the blanks so it reads the time in between it, it just it pays attention to these blank spots here so this what this is so this was the main morpher this was a weapon this is a morpher and the american sword was a weapon and the, but the japanese sword was the morpher so they basically made, they swapped the rolls around, but I don't mind. What I do mind is that the functionality this thing has, the American one. But before we get to that, I'm just going to point out that when I set stars on here, apparently some fans think that the, that the Japanese stars take up too much space of this front part. I mean, I can see what they're talking about, because if they wanted it to look more like this, I can see, but I mean, I don't personally mind if the when the star takes up most of the space because it's got electronics and it's big. What do you expect, really? I mean, look, look, look how sick this guy is. Look, look. Uh. So of course, this one. I think this one looks a bit. Um, in some fans' eyes, this one looks a bit better because it doesn't take up quite as much space. In fact. It just looks a mess, and you can also <laughs> you can rest the American star inside of the barrel of the, of, of the Karakuri hang, and it just looks funny. Um, uh, again, what I do mind about the American version though is the lack of functionality because this one has three modes, this one has two modes, but it, it is marketed as having three modes because it counts the morpher as being one mode. Which is fair, I suppose. But, again, this only has two modes. First one is the claw mode, which I'm going to do just out of single Japanese version, because why not? Claw mode. These get lifted up on, by the, on their own. These blades, of course, missing the metallic texture effect. Compared to the Japanese version. 
as you can see they got the molded details on point though so I don't mind I'm gonna give that to him and of course the other mode this has is the sword mode because the one thing that this does that the American that the Japanese version can't do this little red symbol here this little sticker unlike this version this one is a button which you can push down and it folds up into a sword and yes, admittedly, the um, the American sword's a lot bigger than this thing, as you can tell. So, I mean, this the, the American version's still not long, God no, but they did mind they did find a way to make that work. You can attempt to replicate this with the American with the Japanese version by folding up both blades here, but it. Doesn't really work, but you can see what they were going for because they knew those blades were available. Effectively, also, this is a more accurate Japanese sword because it only just uses this blade here. So it is possible to replicate it more accurately, but. Uh... Yeah, th th they did have a bigger sword. I, I do see where they were coming from. Also, this blade is also only spring loaded. That's the only purpose this blade has. Uh, but the one thing that this morpher is missing is the ability to go into bow mode. Here the blades come out, this part comes back like you've already seen. The furthest this can go is that you can move the blades out like this, but they don't lock into place at all, they just kind of wobble about. These ones do, as you can tell by the clicky noises. These ones don't really have those, but yeah, this is the closest you can get because this back part does not come out at all. It's permanently moulded in because the, that's where the battery compartment is. But they could have easily put the battery compartment somewhere else, like here. If they did that, they could have made this have a bow mode, which is, um, uh, I don't know why they cut that out. feels like a missed opportunity. Another thing I'm going to point out is that, again, unlike the Japanese version, the American version is not ambidextrous, because if you look here, not only is the handle a lot bigger, there's buttons on both sides, as you can see, there's only one button on one side, here. Which, I mean, yeah, I, I know why they cut that out, but it feels a lot less cool. This one is a lot cooler, because it has two buttons because of ambidextrous people. This one doesn't, it only has one button. Also, my literal, my hand's literally too big for this. I can't hold it, it's putting strain on my knuckles, I think, if the side bits count as knuckles, it's putting strain on those. It's putting, it's putting strain on my red echidna. Anywho, um, the American version is nearly there. It's nearly correct. It's nearly got it, I mean, the lack of metallic stickers, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Um, the fact they made it a morpher, cool. That's fine. I'm fine with that. But it's the fact they they got so close with the whole bow mode, and they got it so close. I mean, would it have killed them to just make this part just move out a bit? I mean, they didn't have to program it. They wouldn't have to program any sounds for it. They just had to move this part out. It's like they put the battery compartment over there just to make an excuse as to not actually incorporate that into the toy. I mean, that seems awfully convenient for them, don't you think? So it feels a bit of a missed opportunity not to have it go into bow mode, because that way they could have marketed it as having, like, four modes if you counted them off as, like, if you counted them off as having a separate mode. So they didn't do it, and I'm kind of disappointed. But, hey, what you gonna do? Nothing. Anyway, um... We're done with Ninja in this series for now, unless I come back with a future video with another Ninja thing. And the next video is going to be... Gabu! Gabu Revolver! With the spinning barrel and the anti-orange caps on the trigger guns.